Hey everybody, welcome to today's breakfast. My name is Casey Star Long and I wanna welcome you. So what I do every day is I come online and I call it today's breakfast because breakfast is supposed to be the most important meal of the day. And so what I do is I share a word from the Lord and I call it today's breakfast because just think about how nourishing it is to have a word from the Lord. So today, y'all, we're going to be talking about really thinking about what we think about. So just being intentional about just taking a moment to begin to think about the things that we are thinking about. So I want to give y'all a little bit of time to come on in. So as I was getting ready for our time together, I was making my husband breakfast and usually I'm pretty good with multitasking, but apparently my brain was moving faster than my actual hands because this is what happened. (laughs) So I actually have a napkin wrapped around my thumb because I cut a pretty big gash in my thumb. So taking care of that on this morning. So let me know How is your morning going? How is your day going? Maybe you're watching this a little bit later. Just check in in the comments and let me know how you are doing on today. You guys, I have been reading this book kind of off and on. It's called Power Thoughts by Joyce Meyer. And um, I've been reading this book off and on because I just know how important it is to just make sure that our thoughts align with what God's word says. And so I like to just make sure that my face, (laughs) that my eyeballs are constantly um, in front of basically God's word, that I'm having God's word constantly in front of me. And because I know that um, just in my life, just the way how God uh, moves in my life, and I believe the way how he moves in all of our lives is that he has put us on this earth for a purpose, that there are things that God has for us to do while we are here um, as believers, and that in order to move and do those things, it's going to be really important that our thoughts align with what his thoughts say. And uh, our scripture is going to come from I'm going to put it up on the screen. Our scripture comes from Proverbs 23 and 7. And I talked a little bit about this a couple of days ago. But the first part of the scripture says that basically, so as a man thinketh, he is. So how you think, you know, that's how you begin to see yourself. Um, That's how your actions dictate what you decide to do and what you don't do. I remember um, in my 30s, I made the decision that I wanted to run a half marathon. Now, I did not know anybody that it personally ever ran um, a, a marathon before. I don't come from a family of runners, but um, I was just exposed to just kind of different people and they were running. And I realized I was like, you know, that is something that I would really like to do. Like, I can't imagine what it would be like to run, you know, a mile or a couple of blocks and not gasp for air. And so I had just this desire to run a half marathon. And um, so I began to set my mind on running this half marathon. I began to uh, look up uh, running plans to help me run. And there were these plans that basically outlined um, between your race day and 12 to 14 weeks beforehand. And there were these goals that you would accomplish each and every day. Um, I began to, you know, research the type of running shoes. I began to research, you know, just kind of the the uh, earpieces to wear while I ran. I began to um, make decisions because I made up my mind that I am going to run this half marathon. I found a race for me to sign up for. I registered for that race. And so there's something about just having a made up mind. So today we're talking about, you know, being intentional and stopping to think about the things that we really think about. And so I had made up my mind that I was going to run that half marathon. And you know what? I did. I didn't do like any record breaking time. I think my time was like two hours and 18 minutes. And, uh, (laughs) you know, I think that that's probably just very average. But the thing is, is that I had made up my mind that I was going to do it. I had made up my mind that I was going to become a runner. And so I did it. 
Now, I also want to share a story with you about what happens when, you know, you don't make up your mind and when you allow toxic thoughts to come in. So um, I ran this race. Uh, When I was 30, I think I had just turned 30 or I was about to turn 30. I think I was 29 and I was going to turn 30 in a couple of months. And so while I'm running this race, I said, you know what? I really want to run another half marathon before I turn 40. Like that, that'll just be like another goal. So like in 10 years, I want to run a half marathon. So about a year and a half ago, I began to think about, well, You know, if I really want to achieve this goal of running another half marathon before I turn 40, I need to, you know, I need to to begin to plan it. So we're talking about, you know, pausing and thinking about the things that we're thinking about. So I knew that it was a goal that I wanted to run this half marathon before I turned 40. But um, it was a goal. But my thoughts were just all over the place. My thoughts were literally all over the place. Um, there were days where I where I was like, okay, yes, I'm going to start planning. I'm going to start training. I'm going to do it. And then the next day, my thoughts would be like, well, there's no way that I can do it. Um, I don't have the time. It's going to be too hard. It's going to be too difficult. You know, it's too hard to, to even think about running. So I was just kind of like all over the place. And we know that in the book of James, it talks about that a man who is double-minded, he is unstable in all of his ways. And so I want to just share this story with you because there was an example where I made up my mind and I was like, yes, I'm going to run. I'm going to become, you know, a half marathon runner. And then 10 years later, I didn't do the same things. I was just kind of all over the place. And so I want to ask you, what are the things that, what are the things that God has called you to do? And what are your thoughts concerning those things? And I want to give you permission to every day, just stop and think about the things that you're thinking about. Just really stop and just have an assessment of like, okay, what are my thoughts? about myself today? You know, what are my thoughts about the things that I feel like God is calling me to do? I will share that um, just Sunday, um, I I feel like, I I hope I'm not going down a rabbit trail today, (laughs) but um, I have a lot on my heart, I guess, today. But on Sunday, my pastor, he did not give a normal altar call he gave an altar call for people to start businesses. Like um, God began to just use him prophetically about the importance of taking advantage of this time of where we are um, as a country and how there are a lot of grants and opportunities, pr- particularly for African Americans in this season. And um, his call was that if God has given us a business to not drag our feet, but to really be intentional about going ahead and starting it, because you know, like the floodgates are open. There are so many opportunities right now for grants and for um, contracts and things of such. And so um, there's there's been something that God has placed on my heart for over 10 years. Um, and it's just, it's right along the path of my gifts, desires. And I always knew that I would do it, but just didn't know when. And past couple of days, God has just been bringing it up. Like this is the time. And, but part of me is like, I have so many other things that are also on my plate as well. And so today you guys, I just began to really just stop and think about what I was thinking about. You know, I began to just really stop and think about, you know, okay, well, some of these thoughts are fear-based, you know? And so let me, let me pull down those thoughts that are fear-based and really allow myself to think what God thinks regarding this situation. And so I want to just share that example with you to just kind of stop and think about what are some of the thoughts that are in your head? And as we've talked about the past couple of days, do those thoughts align with God's word? So I know that the enemy is the, um, he always brings accusation. He always brings condemnation. He always brings doubt. He always brings unbelief. And so if those thoughts are, you know, in your mind, if they are not thoughts that are in God's word, then what do we do? We pull them down. Romans 12 and two says to be not conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So 
when we pause and when we think about what we're thinking about, this gives us opportunity to renew our minds according to the word of God. Now, I believe that God has had us all in this Holy Ghost timeout with um, coronavirus. The side effect has been that many of us have had to stay inside. Jobs have been shut down or people have had to, you know, respond or work remotely. But this has been a time for God to speak to us and really outline the next steps that he has for us. And so in order to be able to walk in these next steps, it's going to be really important that you make sure that your thoughts are aligning with what God's word says. So remember, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So as a woman thinketh in her heart, so is she. What are the thoughts that you are thinking about yourself, about your talents, about your capabilities, about what God is saying? And so it takes practice. <laughs> and so that's why it's important for you to just kind of do this assessment and sometimes you might have to do an assessment every hour <laughs> or a couple of times during the day to just really stop and think about, OK, what thoughts are bombarding my mind? You know, what what are these thoughts? Are they fear based? You know, are they faith based? You know, what am I thinking about? And then you begin to filter them out because I want you to win. I want you to be successful. I want you to do everything that God has called you to do. I am like a cheerleader of yours in the spirit. And I know that I'm just feeling like just a representative of God, that he's like cheerleading for you. He wants you to do everything that he's called you to do. He wants you to start that business. He wants you to write the book. He wants you to launch the ministry. He wants you to redecorate your house. You know, he wants you to step out in faith and do what he's called you to do. God is cheerleading you on. It's going to be so important to just make sure that your thoughts are lining up with the word of God. So I'm giving you permission today to just pause and think about what you are thinking about and just saying, you know what? Is this thought, does it line up with the word of God? And if so, cool. But if not, then you know what? We cast it down. We'd be so surprised that our thoughts impact our behaviors and our decisions about a lot of things. You know, maybe I will one day uh, run another half marathon. Maybe I will. You know, anything is possible. But I know one thing is, is I'm not going to tell myself that I can't do it. Now it's kind of like, do I want to do it? <laughs> now that's kind of that thing. But, um, you know, I'm not going to just speak over myself and be like, girl, you can't do it. You too heavy or whatever. Nope. You know, um, so, so what are you thinking about and allowing yourself time to just stop and make an assessment and really think about that? So, all right, you guys, I feel like that is just like a word from the Lord to just encourage you today. Just very practical. Um, because he wants you to be successful and he wants to speak to you and um, you just being very open and just willing to hear from him. So I pray that this blesses you guys. Just a couple of announcements on today, y'all. I am still um, I am still open to receiving submissions from those of you guys that live in the St. Louis area. Um, we are creating a book called When St. Louis Prays, and it is going to be a compilation of prayers. For those of you that may be familiar with Jermaine Copeland, she's written a book called Prayers That Avail Much. Now, that book is just a book of just different kinds of prayers and circumstances that a believer may find themselves in. I have found that book to be very helpful. Uh, when St. Louis Prays is going to be kind of like that. It's a compilation of prayers. It's a book of prayers for St. Louis. So you will be able to pick up this book and just pray for our city. There'll be various categories that the prayers fall um, under alignment with. But the great thing about this book is that it is going to be written by St. Louisan. So this is just an opportunity to just keep intercession continuous throughout our region. It's just another tool in the toolbox that people can pick up and just pray over our city. And so I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging if you know children, maybe in your youth ministry or teen ministry, they have a heart for prayer. They have a heart and vision to see the city of St. Louis prosper um, for you to just go to when St. Louis 
there's a section there called write and you can just write and submit your prayer right there um, electronically. Um, it's my hope that this uh, prayer book, it will be published by this fall. So there is a deadline for you to submit your prayers by July 31st. Listen, you don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to have some great platform. All you have to do is to be a believer and allow God to just uh, minister through you through a written prayer. So whether your prayer is one paragraph or whether it's a couple of paragraphs, it will be accepted. Okay. So, all right, you guys, I just wanted to share that with you all. I'm going to be back tomorrow for more breakfast. So I pray that you have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.